What's up everybody, welcome to money management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and Fina Saga. And uh, for today's video guys, I have an amazing news. First of all, I will show you a real bombshell that was dropped by Marcus uh, and I will show you his uh, due diligence and uh, his uh, investigation of uh, the uh, MMTLP saga and I have to uh, say that it will literally blow your mind. On top of that, I will show you an update from Scott Trott in regards uh, to his uh, lawsuit and uh, now the quite uh, crucial news for today's video is the lawsuit against uh, McCabe, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons and Burda. And uh, definitely this uh, news uh, might change a lot in our case. That is why guys, without further ado, let's get started. But first of all, hit the like button and drop me a line in the comment section if you think my videos are valuable for you. And let's start with this news. Junk Savvy wrote this tweet in response to Scott Trott's uh, tweet that uh, he wrote 16 hours ago. And let me quote to first of all his tweet. Heads up. Those of you with Schwab, Fidelity, Robinhood or other brokerages should make sure you print out your arbitration agreement today or at least take screenshots of the entire arbitration section. Check for changes or alternations, uh, Schwabis, specifically in section 12 regarding FINRA and uh, the sole choice of FINRA as the arbiter. Not legal advice, just uh, making sure all of us dirty little animals in MMTLP and our marsupial cousins in AMC and GME have uh, every new avenue of attack preserved that, the, that may be taking uh, shape uh, from last week's filing and uh, the 5 pm torpedo that gets fired tonight uh, in, track, uh, in Trot versus Rubinstein case. Uh, my non-professional opinion is uh, we just put uh, one torp into FINRA, but it most significantly has a horrific effect on Schwab. Yes, long walks in the woods occasionally give me pea brain insights, especially when I am asking for wisdom for hip uh, big sailor in sky. And they are going to rapidly affect damage control by possibly altering client agreements. And guys, this is crucial point. We have uh, to make a snapshot of uh, their current uh, position and current agreements. And uh, in order to use these uh, documents in our uh, litigations. Again, I believe I'm over the target on this one and have imperfect uh, intel at the moment. So I'm putting it out uh, in the wild for folks to act with their own uh, discretion. If I'm wrong, no harm and no fool. Secure your rear areas anyway. I'll post the motion after it gets filed, unless Schwab asks for a 48-hour hold uh, for discussions, at which point I will uh, cease fire and enter a holding pattern. Don't count on Schwab having a come to Jesus moment yet, kids. So hang in there. But I think certain things uh, are now in play that weren't on 18 July of uh, 2024. On top of that, guys, uh, let me show you the tweet that was uh, written by Junk Savvy in response to Scott's uh, tweet. She wrote, uh, Now that Finra is accused of participating in the criminal enterprise in multiple federal RICO cases, arguing that they can no longer be an impartial arbiter, Therefore, invalidating brokers' arbitration clauses. Are brokers going to try to change their broker agreements to accommodate other arbitration facilitators? No, they would never do that, would they? And uh, she added uh, several links uh, to the broker-dealers agreements uh, from Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Robinhood, E-Trade, Webull. And uh, I have to say that, guys, if you have, uh, uh, basically, you have uh, some... Uh, accounts on a certain broker dealer, please uh, make sure that you have these screenshots of uh, the brokers uh, of the agreement, basically, because uh, it might be very important uh, to save this information for the future litigations. On top of that, guys, Scott also made an update in regards to his case. He wrote this 14 hours ago. Schwab, uh, Schwab's lawyers said no to an abeyance, but uh, yes to talks. So I declined. Marvin Gaye is signing right now. I'll be filing again tonight and see if we can move for the needle a little. 
and he added this. To be clear, they are aware now that I'm aiming to get all the rulings on FINRA out of the way as uh, that uh, will change the complexion of the battlefield in a multitude of ways. If uh, the judge grants it, GTS, Ari and Schwab are on the sidelines. And uh, guys, I have to say that uh, Scott, uh, as I already mentioned, is extremely active person right now in our community. And uh, he basically makes this uh, news uh, only, almost on a consistent basis, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, these news uh, are not only important for our community, but uh, uh, this uh, information leads uh, to some actions that we have to perform in order to uh, achieve certain results. And uh, that is why, guys, I highly encourage you to uh, follow his uh, Twitter account, Green Hills 303 and uh, you can uh, follow him uh, and his uh, thoughts uh, basically in real time. On top of that, guys, uh, take a look uh, right here. Uh, Junk Savvy posted this tweet uh, in response to Marcus's set of tweets, and she wrote, always the exception, they broke every rule, every policy, every procedure, and now you know why, we are not going away. And she refers definitely to the... Uh, a due diligence that was uh, made by Marcus and he announced it uh, uh, at the very beginning of uh, September and uh, he postponed uh, uh, this uh, uh, due diligence several times because he had to uh, complete it perfectly well and I have to say that uh, he's done it and uh, if you want uh, you can definitely uh, read uh, this entire uh, this entire thread but I want to show you uh, uh, some uh, details right here. If you uh, find uh, the same news on MMTLP resources, you can see the link uh, that e that leads you to this uh, type of uh, uh, this type of uh, basically the same information, but it uh, was uh, made uh, in more readable manner. And guys, let me show you just several details. I have to give a huge shout out to Marcus because he's done an amazing job. Let me quote you some details. So, he wrote, I used to think that FINRA was not transparent, but now I know that couldn't be further from the truth. Stick uh, with me on this. FINRA is exceptionally transparent for most of its operations, but selectively transparent uh, when there is a problem. In this work, I will show you that FINRA has trapped itself within its transparency. Their actions, or lack thereof, are now in uh, plain sight uh, for all to see. FINRA is suspected of potential fraud in the MMTLP case uh, and the following data is about to confirm this. This uh, revelation should uh, raise serious concerns about the ethical behavior we expect from those in a position of trust and power. And uh, this uh, threat uh, consists several tweets, uh, I have to say that uh, it consists basically several parts. Uh, and uh, here is uh, the list of topics, and uh, I don't want to dig deeper, I just want to show you some details right here. So, first of all, he asked uh, several fundamental questions about RMTLP. And I have to say that uh, these questions are quite similar to the questions that we already know and that was asked by other community members uh, and even by the latter of uh, uh, 74 members of Congress. And uh, let me go to further. He also added some details in regards to the UPC committee, what they are and uh, what is most importantly, what they are not. And he explained it in details. Let me quote you just a couple of paragraphs uh, of uh, the part what they are not. So, the UPC committee plays a high level interpretative role in corporate actions, ensuring market order and consistency with, an established, uh, with established uh, market practices. However, unlike a court, they don't pass legal judgments or impose judgments, but ensure corporate actions align with market standards and investor protections. And guys, this is the crucial point. Let me quote you further. In 2022, 10 members composed the UPC committee, two from FINRA and eight from market participants, financial institutions, employees. All eight members uh, firms uh, in the UPC committee were directly or indirectly involved in trading of MMTLP. But there is nothing to see here, right? If you sum up the group experience, it, the combined total is over 150 years. And we know all the people from this UPC committee of 2022 who implemented 
the illegal use record. So, uh, Marcus also added uh, the metamaterials instructions that they issued uh, in their PR statement. And uh, he added, on November 30th, 2022, George Palkers posted on X doubling down on his instructions to FINRA before FINRA released their first corporate action. The most important point was no X dividend date. And he refers to the due diligence that was made by Rare GD. And by the way, guys, if you click on each and every post right here, you will see in a completely new window the exact tweet uh, uh, that is basically referring to the same information. And let me show you further. So, uh, he wrote also FINRA's filings uh, in regards to UPC, uh, in regards to MTLP case. And let me show you some details right here. So, on the morning of December the 9th, 2022, before the opening of, mark of the markets, FINRA halted the trading of MTLP. Later that day, FINRA released UPC notice number 3522 explaining the trading halt of MTLP. And guys, we are nearing to the crucial point of uh, the entire, uh, of entire article. Uh, let me show you further. The reason for the deep dive. The following sentence of the UPC notice number 3522 for MTLP inspired this work. And here is the direct speech. The trading and quoting halt will end concurrent with the deletion of the symbol effective Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. By the way, guys, we know that uh, the symbol, the MTLP symbol was deleted much later uh, than uh, December 13th, somewhere in February. And uh, uh, for more than two months, uh, FINRA stated uh, that uh, it was some kind of uh, coding issue uh, with this uh, deletion. On top of that, let me show you further information. He added uh, the UPC notice numbers. Uh, uh, he basically made a very interesting uh, comparison of uh, the crucial of the keywords uh, uh, inside different uh, UPC notices. Reorganization cancelled when issued, again cancelled with one L, halted, halt, 40, uh, 6440, concurrent, significant uncertainty, trading and quoting halt, deletion and deleted. And I have to say that uh, you can uh, see uh, how, many na how many times uh, these uh, keywords uh, were mentioned in, their, uh, in the notices. But uh, let me quote you further. Uh, he added uh, uh, several uh, uh, notices uh, and uh, he compares them uh, uh, very thoroughly. And uh, he basically made 13 uh, uh, notices from other companies and one uh, uh, UPC notice for MMTLP. And uh, let me show you uh, uh, his uh, conclusion. This is the last notice we are looking at before I show you the MMTLP notice. But now you are familiar with the pattern. They always have the section discussing the halt and give us a reason for most notices. Lastly, they inform the market how and when it will uh, resume trading. It's pretty simple formula, right? And uh, here you can see that uh, the trading and quoting halt will end concurrent uh, with the deletion. And this is the direct uh, uh, phrase from the MMTLP UPC notice. And here you can see that there is no mention of uh, uh, trading settlement and uh, no halt reason. And uh, basically for more than 620 days we still don't know the reason of this uh, uh, use halt implementation. On top of that, guys, he compares uh, the uh, UPC halted time frame. And uh, right here on this screenshot uh, you can see, let me show you it in details, you can see that uh, the longest uh, and uh, basically the only company that is still uh, U3 halted is MMTLP. Other companies have uh, quite a small number of days of their U3 halt and uh, the, trade, the and, uh, trades were resumed. The only company uh, that has a quite substantial number of days of uh, 213 is Riviera Tool Company. And uh, let me show you further. Uh, he also uh, edited the UPC committee possible rules broken. And he uh, mentioned a lot of rules that were broken and not only the rules itself, but uh, the direct part of this rule and the issue of this uh, particular part. On top of that, he uh, made um, very 
uh, important and uh, very deep uh, investigation of uh, several rules on top of previous ones. And uh, he made uh, several quotations. Uh, he mentioned about issue and uh, he uh, mentioned about the violation itself. And let me show you that you can find all of them. Uh, wait a second, right here. So, uh, FINRA broke rule 2010. FINRA broke rule 2020. Next one, rule 5121. Next one, 5310. Next one, 5330. Next one, 11880. Next one, 11100. Next one, 11120. Next one, 11810. And next one, 11820. And guys, this is on top of uh, the most uh, basically obvious rule of 6490 that we know for for ages. And that is why, guys, this due diligence is extremely important for us because it might give us another uh, another potential path how we can uh, challenge the FINRA's immunity because uh, this is a pure violation of their own rules and this means uh, this uh, should be investigated uh, from outside of FINRA and SEC. And guys, definitely it is a huge, huge update on our case, uh, but it is not the end. Let me show you that, uh, uh, wait a second, uh, right here, we have a new lawsuit, it is a class action lawsuit, and I mentioned uh, about this uh, in my yesterday's video, and let me quote to the tweet that was written by Roman Soups. Breaking news, John Burda named as a defendant uh, in uh, Next Bridge class action lawsuit, Target uh, versus Next Bridge at all, uh, George Palikers and uh, Ken Rice dismissed. More in comments. And he added uh, this uh, screenshot uh, just one hour ago. Allegations number six, Next Bridge assets on uh, S1 were misleading. And let me show you this in details. Uh, number six, uh, the section number six. The uh, registration uh, statement contained untrue statements of material fact and or omitted to state material facts to make the statements therein not misleading. In uh, pertinent part, uh, the registration statement uh, misstated. A. The value of uh, the ONG assets. According to the registration statement, the ONG assets were worth uh, more than $47 million as of September 30th of 2022. This was not true. Historically, the OG assets were never worth anything close to that amount and uh, sure enough, Next Bridge later wrote down the value of the OG assets to zero and B. Next Bridge and its audit, committee abil uh, audit committee's ability to present accurate financial statements. Despite having an audit committee and the independent auditor tasked with ensuring uh, the accuracy of Next Bridge financial statements, the registration statements, financial statements contain material errors. Information required under item 404 of uh, regulation SK concerning a related party transaction involving certain OG assets. This related party transaction allowed defendant McCabe to intercept oil and gas revenues uh, belonging to NBH. The registration statement did not disclose material information concerning this transaction as required. And guys, this is a real bombshell because uh, this lawsuit, uh, uh, this lawsuit uh, is basically against uh, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons, all of their C levels executive, uh, uh, including Ma uh, Gregory McCabe and John Burda. On top of that, guys, take a look right here. Sam I M wrote this tweet. Uh, John Burda's infamous uh, uh, direct speech haven't sold a single MTLP share. Call is in the lawsuit. Doku, you are famous, you made into the transcripts. And here is uh, the screenshot of uh, the John Burda statement that he didn't sell any shares. But then, uh, as you can see, it appears that he sold uh, about uh, 1.93 uh, million shares out of his position. And uh, Greg McKay, by the way, also sold some of his shares. And this is the most concerning part of uh, John Burda's and Greg McKay uh, positions in regards to the entire MMTLP saga. That is why, guys, uh, I uh, told you multiple times, we don't care who is guilty in this case. We have to find the resolution. And we have to receive, basically, I'm not an MMTLP shareholder. I'm just helping you uh, to find this uh, information and to make it uh, possible to have fair and transparent market. But, guys, 
you have to receive uh, all the money that you spent uh, on this uh, uh, so-called investment and you have uh, to receive for uh, uh, you have to uh, cover all your damages and uh, all the wrongdoers have to pay you significant amount of money on top of your initial investments in order to cover your losses and guys let me tell you my personal story i have a wife and two children aged 11 and uh, 15 as well as a small dog after 30 years of living in russia near the baikal lake we decided to move now we reside in serbia Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MMTLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on